Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to make an interface between a gold crystal. So it's going to be a cubic gold crystal and a cubic perovskite crystal. Now the gold crystal will have four layers and the perovskite will actually just have one monolayer. And I'm going to show you my interpretation of this. So here is where I get the perovskite crystal from. So I type in something like cubic perovskite cesium lead bromide materials project. So you can see all the different options here. Each one has a different materials project ID. Here the materials project ID is uh, 600089. You can click on here. Uh, here's your um, cubic cesium lead bromide. If you know a system's cubic when it has its three unit cell uh, axes having the same length as well as 90 degree angles between them. What's really interesting, I, I like this view, is if you play around with it, you can actually see how the cubic system contains a hexagonal system within it. You can also see an, uh, an orthorhombic or tetragonal system in here. So yeah, cubic is very high symmetry. Um, anyways, so what I do is I download this as a conventional standard. It renders here in Vesta, and then you export it as a VASP file, and you save in Cartesian coordinates. So when I do that, here I use PyCharm as an editor. You can see my two um, different files. So this one here, au.vasp, this is the gold file. And you can see here it's in Cartesian coordinates, these four atoms. And here is the perovskite in Cartesian coordinates, these five atoms. So in Vesta, uh, these look like, like this. I pressed Command-O to open that window. If you're on Windows, you would press Control-O. Or you would come to File, Open. See how on a Mac I have Command O for open. So here's the perovskite. Okay, it has a lattice constant of about 6.01. And here's the gold. It has a lattice constant of about 4.1. So how do you make you know interfaces between these two? Uh, to do this, we're going to be using Lattice Mixer. So Lattice Mixer, let's go ahead and log in. So you would use uh, whatever one you have to log in. Okay, uh, first thing you do when you log in is I go to my user profile and I'm going to add some tokens. This adds three tokens at a time and we cap at about 23 to 25 tokens. Okay, so I have 24 tokens. Let's go to the builder. So the builder now only supports uh, these two lattices and contact crystal faces, but I'm going to add many more faces and many more lattices in the coming uh, releases. So our vacuum axis length, this is, so the vacuum is always gonna be in the C axis. It's C as in cat. Um, that's gonna be the axis that contains the vacuum. The other two axes, the A and B axes, are going to contain uh, the periodic, uh, the, the actual structure. So let's go ahead and make this uh, 40 angstroms, okay? Now the separation distance between the two slabs Right now, this distance refers to the distance between the centers of the slab. So let's make this eight or not eight or nine or ten, uh, maybe nine. Okay, nine angstroms. It doesn't matter. You can have these integers or floats. It doesn't matter here. Uh, an integer is, would be just this. A float is this value with a decimal. So the first system we're going to upload here. Um, let's go ahead and let's go. I have to go to my YouTube. Okay, we're going to upload uh, cesium lead bromide. And this is a cubic system. And we're going to have the 001 face be the contact face, or the inner, the, in, the face at the interface. System two is going to be our gold. And that also is cubic 001. So when everything looks good, you can go ahead and press submit. So the computation has completed, and we have two matching heterostructures. You can see here that basically the system um, likes the first, the, we have 3.9% lattice mismatch, and system one is two by two, and then this one is another lattice that's 50% larger. So, you know, 50% of two is one, two plus one is three. Here, it's, it's taking the first system to be four by four, 50% of four is two, two plus four is six. So apparently this combination uh, returns 3.9% lattice mismatch, but you could see they're very different sizes. So let's preview this larger one. 
So I'm using right click to drag, left click to swivel, and then the mouse uh, scroll scroller to zoom in and out. So yeah, here's the perovskite system. You can see that the atoms are on the edge here, but not here. That's because this viewer takes into account periodic boundary conditions. Um, if you, again, if you wanted to increase this distance, uh, you would increase it here. This nine angstroms is the difference between the centers of the slab. This vacuum access length is basically the length of this blue line. Okay, but this has 344 atoms and that's quite large. So let's go to the smaller system. It makes more sense to go to the smaller system because it's got the same lattice mismatch. So here's the smaller system. So you didn't have to do anything. All you had to do was have your initial structures, get your lattice type and contact face, and then submit it. So this is much easier than how we've been doing them before. Let's go ahead and download it. So we have 24 tokens. Downloading costs a token. Anytime you need more tokens, go to your user profile. They're completely free um, you know, for the foreseeable future. So let's download here. So are you sure? Yes. Hetero structure has been downloaded. Let's open it up. So here it is. Um, so this is actually, so I, I, this is three layers, three monolayers of gold and one perovskite monolayer. Now it's really tricky uh, because gold is just a single element. You know, there's nothing else in there, no oxygen or, you know, cesium or bromide. So it's just gold, right? So one monolayer of, so this is three monolayers of gold, but really it's what, this is one monolayer of perovskite. And it's very tricky because perovskite has, you know, three different chemicals, three different atoms in it. It has this bromine, this lead, and the cesium. So this is a particular one where the bromine and the lead are on the edge. Uh, you could formulate it in a different way. It would maybe take a little more pre-processing. But to see this interface a little better, I like to go to edit bonds, delete this. So like this is this is what I would show if I was in like doing an academic paper and then I would go to space filling. Space filling is really good because it allows you to see like the actual distance that like the, the system would see in terms of it's the interaction within like electronic structure codes. This distance you might be tempted to think that they're too far apart and they need to be closer but the space filling model gives you a really good idea of how far apart things really are. So if you wanted to figure out like you know, what's the distance between the layers? You could go to boundary. Uh, let's have ZB2. Okay. And select okay. And here, I just go to this uh, bond distance here. You can see between the two, we have about 25 angstroms of vacuum. Okay. So it might not look like it, but yeah, there's 25 angstroms of vacuum. And between the faces is roughly four angstroms of space. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and expand this in the X and Y. Like if you were to do a, uh, for a paper, and then we'll turn this back to one. So yeah, this is, uh, so this is an interface between the perovskite 001 face and the gold 001 face. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching everybody. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or, you know, suggestions for new features or, or anything, just uh, let me know. All right. Take care, everyone. See ya.